so honored to be here to be able to share some of my knowledge on IVP. Yeah, if uh, during my presentation if you all have any question, feel free to stop me anytime. Yeah, it's good that we have uh, interactive uh, sessions so that when we leave this room, all of us gain something. Yeah, even for myself, I'm learning from you as well. Okay. So before I share about the technology or even the treatment, I would like to share with you all these slides to, um, to uh, let you all know that actually for Aero or Telefax IABP, we have more than 40 years experience because before we, because Telefax acquired Aero and before um, Telefax acquired Aero, actually Aero acquired Contron. So I'm not sure that if you are in the field for so long, you all may know about this Contran brand, which is a very old IAVP system, used to be very huge. And now you see the innovation and so on, and the R&D spent on the IAVP, and now we get this tiny little system where you can actually easily transport it from one department to the other department. Yeah, and when we design the IABP system, there are a few things we are looking into. First, very critical is that the efficacy and performance. The three key aspects we are looking at is a timing, trigger, and volume delivery accuracy. So I'm going to touch more details on each of these. Um, okay, and patient safety, of course ease of use and you can see that the button is so easily identified 
which actually helped you during the treatment. At, for example, with the color coding. Sorry, maybe push a bit. Yeah, you can see that the ECG, yeah, we have different color coding, and for arterial line, we is red in color. So all these features help you to identify easier. Like green is when you're on the button, and when you're off it, the red color button, and when standby, yellow color. So all these help with your visual, especially the critical button for IBP treatment. And later, I'm going to talk about one special feature, which is the volume delivery. That will be uh, towards later on. And optimizing value. Why is it important? Because when we have the IABP system, it's good that this system stay with us with least problem throughout. And our system here, we are using the bellow system. Inside is all full um, stainless steel. Meaning that for you to maintain the system, it, we don't have schedule uh, change of the parts. So like for the other system existing in the market, they're using the compressor system. So what do you understand by compressor? So it's something like the aircon. If we have the aircon at home, and what, how do we need to maintain it? After like 1000 hours, you need to call the service guy to come in and service your aircon. So that's, and we do not use that kind of system. So meaning that you don't need to have the schedule part change. But of course we have the yearly maintenance, meaning that you can engage our people to come in to help you to check the system once a year, which is in the IFU. So in another way, meaning that the cost saving for your center is um, significant. Because imagine that you need to keep coming, asking uh, the service guy to come in and change your parts. Because we have one uh, analysis in US, may not be applicable here, but I'm just quoting the analysis we did in US. Like for 10 years maintenance, the cost that you spend for, to maintain a system can actually almost buy one brand new IABP system. That's the value that we are offering. Okay, principles of counter pulsation. So, yeah, I'm sure that you all are very familiar with the technology and the treatment. So, the principles is actually work on the counter pulsation. Why, why counter pulsation? Meaning that it actually works, the system works opposite from how our heart works. Like, for example, when your heart at the diastole stage is relaxing. So that's where the pump inflate. So that's counter pulsation. And it's inserted through femoral artery. This is a electrical event. And usually we sense the electrical event first too. Uh, to, ident uh, to see the start of the cardiac cycle. Then, only the mechanical event. That's why it's more accurate if we actually trace using the ECG source <laughs> compared to the AP source. And you can see here, so during the, uh, actually I'm going to touch first on the inflation because that happened during the diastole phase. It's critical to time it properly because the inflation should happen during diastole. So, what happened here is that during diastole, when your heart is relaxing and when the aortic valve just closed, and when we, for example, if we are using the 40cc balloon, so we are actually creating this pressure here and the pressure will force uh, the pressure towards here and improve on the coronary perfusion. Right? Because you see that here, it's about 85-90% block. <coughs> meaning there's no way for the blood to... There's actually forcing the blood to move forward. By having that, by doing so, you are getting more 
perfusion to the coronary. And of course, at the bottom here, because there are also some pressure exerting proximally, uh, sorry, to the this, uh, this. So you are getting some flow to the renal. So that it's the print, the, how it works. And when during the systole, the systole phase, the balloon de deflates. Because it deflates so rapidly, and it's actually creating a vacuum here. If 40 cc, sudden deflation, meaning that we get 40 cc of vacuum here. And how does it help? By suddenly creating this, um, this little space here, it actually helps the blood to eject. Yeah, eject out. And in a way, less stress for the LV. And by do, doing so, it reduces the afterload. Because the principle how they develop this is actually based on the Winkassel effect. So you remember when we were young, I'm not sure that sometimes like we have this aquarium. Yeah, and when we try to get the water out, when we want to change the, the aquarium, what we do is we use a tube and we suck the water out, right? When we do that, it actually helps the water to flow out and then we can drain the aquarium. Yeah, that's the concept of it. Okay, as I mentioned that we are actually putting a lot of effort in developing the IABP con by considering <coughs> these three aspects. Trigger, because that's the indication of when the cardiac cycle starts. And the timing of the IABP system is based on the trigger. If the trigger, if we have mismatch of trigger, then we will not be uh, giving a very optimal therapy or support to the patients. And volume <coughs> delivery, this one I will leave it to the later on, and timing. And yeah, this system we have uh, six timing methods. Later I'm going to talk in details about. Okay, the primary effect of IABP that we are trying to achieve is to have immediate decrease in afterload increase in stroke volume prior to changes in left ventricle and systolic uh, stroke volume. And these are the secondary effects. Reduction in preload due to increase in ejection fraction of stroke volume, decrease in total LV desynchrony, reduction in LV ESV, reduce in stroke work. And the most significant changes occur in the first three to four bits of IABP. Meaning, when we on the system, just in 3 to 4 bits, you see that the full augmentation and the effects. So, if we time the IABP correctly, these are the benefits that we will get. Immediate or predictable impact on LV within 3 to 4 bits of starting the treatment. And increase in stroke volume or ejection fraction by 14% on bit-to-bit -bit basis. What about <coughs> early inflation, if we time it wrongly? So this is the worst timing error. As you can see, rather than improving, it actually decreases the stroke volume by 20% and makes the contraction less coordinated. Okay, For late deflation, there are two part effect depending on the stage of the deflation. So if early systole, it helps to, it actually increase the afterload. But if it happened in the late systole, it reduces the afterload. And this increased stroke volume by 18%. So the timing is essential because you won't know that whether you are getting the late deflation during early systole or late systole. So, uh, so far, any question on the timing? Okay, if no question, I'll move on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether have you ever used our old generation, which is the AutoCAD one, uh, older than this system. And previously, 
we were using the hierarchy base. So what is this hierarchy base? So if we are monitoring the ECG, we actually follow the hierarchy of ECG lead to 1, 3, and then we may move to, if it's not, if we move in sequence, if it's not stable, then we move to the AP signal. That is hierarchy, meaning it's like radio, we are finding tune, the best signal. So by, if by doing so, what will be the weakness? Because when we are actually looking for the best signal, there may be delay, right? Because, what, because if the signal is not very good, the pump may not work well. It, it's still looking and looking. So that is a hierarchy base. And our competitor is still using the hierarchy base. And when we develop and launch this AutoCAD 2 wave, we have changed that to best signal analysis. And what does this best signal analysis do? So we simultaneously monitor six ECG sources at one go. Yeah, and it is so sensitive that with the ECG size of 40 microvolt or even with the low arterial pressure, 3 mm mercury, the balloon can, the pump can sense it and deliver the treatments. But of course, if, it, if it's too low, the, pa the patient may be too weak. But at least you know that the, sensi the sensitivity of the system is so good that if the patient is at the critical condition and you have all these uh, low ECG size or low AP, the system can still detect. And the other thing is that we have this fiber optics catheter. So how does it work is that it, when it's used with the wave algorithm, it actually can give us the bit to bit inflation. Yeah, because we are the only system in the market that can offer um, real-time inflation and real-time deflation. And it can support heart rate up to 200 beat per minute. What does it mean? Because if your patient come in with high heart rate, because a lot of times, if, uh, if the, sometimes the old system, or the, as it, our competitor system, if the, beep, the heart rate is too high, you may need to move to 1 to 2 assist. This button here, 1 to 2 assist. Reason being, their system here, the compressor system, cannot support high heart rate. So you need to reduce to 1 to 2 assist. But for us, this system can support up to 200 beat per minute. So you don't have to worry and uh, need to remind yourself to change the ratio to 1 to 2. Okay. And we have greatest number of timing methods. Six methods. Three inflation and three deflation. And the other feature that we have here is deflation timing management. Because for the real-time deflation, we are using the R wave. But sometimes not all the time that R wave means safe for the patient. Because if we are just looking at the R wave, we there may also have this risk of leg deflation. So that's why we have this deflation timing management to look at the volume of the balloon. Do we have enough time for deflation or not? If we actually can sense that the timing for us to deflate the, the balloon is not enough. Rather than looking at the R wave, the system can will actually move the deflation slightly earlier before the R wave. Okay. So for us to use to enable the function of the wave algorithm, so it's important to have the fiber optic because this fiber optic is a high fidelity catheter. And how does it work is that when we actually put it in, slot it in, right, we don't need to actually set, get the ECG signal or the AP signal from the transducer or monitor. Because imagine patients so critical when they come in, they need signal, immediate signal. And when we actually insert it to the patients, 
there's a sensor on the tip of the balloon catheter that actually monitor the AP during the, uh, when it's actually at the positions. So then we can actually start pumping and the signal is so stable, it actually wouldn't be affected by interference of the machines around and so on. So yeah, I think if you are talking about patients, this group of patients, fiber uptake really helps. And also for the patients with uh, irregular habit, because if we are using the conventional way, we are using the historical data to predict how the system should react for the next week. Yeah. So meaning that if you are using the fiber update, it, it's the information sent to the system is as fast as the light. So when the system capture the information, it will react and time it properly and support the patient according to that bit. I'm going to move to um, quite details on um, like all these different different buttons that we have. Yeah, and also at the same time talk about the the benef the features and benefit. So we have autopilot mode. So from here you can control whether you want to use the autopilot or operational. Autopilot means that the system will decide on the trigger timing or on its own. But let's say if you change your operator, meaning the operator need to monitor the system all the time and the augmentation and the timing. So if you see the timing is not accurate, meaning the operator need to control these two buttons here, inflation or deflation, to make sure that we have proper timing. So, but um, as a representative of Teleflex, we usually suggest or recommend that um, we use the autopilot mode most of the time, unless it's for training purpose, because sometimes you, you, you may want to actually use the operator mode to train your staff how to look at the early inflation, deflation, and so on. But because the system is so intelligent, we, it's good to leave the system to do the job on its own so that you can actually use your time to care about the patients and do all your necessary stuff rather than to 24-7 sit next to the system and keep monitoring it. Okay. So yeah, if on the operator mode, you can choose the ECG source, AP source on your own. And because there are a few options here, you got to choose whether you are using the skin lead or from the monitor. And for the AP, if you are using the fiber optic, the default will always set to fiber optic. Then if you are using the transducer, yeah, you can actually move to transducer. Or even if you slave it from the monitor, yeah, you need to select that. But if you are using autopilot mode, yeah, the system will select for you. Okay, so we, for, even for the operators or the automatic modes, we have this ECG gain adjustment automatically. So it can also automatically select the AP scale because you can actually ch change the scale as well or let the system set, the, uh, set it as a default. And user can select ECG source or lead and AP source, depend, depending on which signals are available. Because sometimes you know that uh, it may be difficult to get the AP, so you can actually select on the ECG and start pumping on it. So it works on either of the, of the source. You don't have to have two source to pump the system. But of course, it's good to have because you, you need the AP also to actually look at the patient's um, conditions and so on. Okay, and this part here is quite interesting. We have this feature here, remove condensation to maintain inflate de deflate speed. How does it work? We have this automatic dehumidification. 
So uh, it's at the side here. Later, I'm going to share. When you open it up, there's this little plastic bottle. I'm sure that some have, most of you have seen it, right? Yeah. What does this little bottle does is that to collect the uh, condensation. Because if now we are using the helium gas, why we are using helium gas is because of the low density. So when it's wet during the treatment, meaning that we are actually increasing the density of the helium. By increasing the density, we may affect the treatment because helium go in and have to inflate and deflate so fast. When it's heavier, meaning the effect may be delayed. Okay, and we continue to monitor the balloon pressure waveforms. Later, I'm going to share that uh, like different when you have different like heart rates, maybe like low heart rates and high heart rates, how does the balloon pressure waveform, which, which is the one here, how does it look? Later, I'm going to share more about that. Okay, this is how the, the monitor look like. Okay, um, let's talk, start from the ECG. We have the skin and a monitor. So if you are using operator mode, you need to press here and select which is your which is the source available. And okay, and for AP, as I have shared earlier on, if you use fiber optic, it will you need to pick the fiber optic. If you are setting the AP Using transducer, you need to press here to select transducer. And there are also options for you to change the scale length or the alarm. This zeroing or calibration works when you are using the fiber optic. If you are using the conventional balloon, you can actually ignore these two modes. Okay, and these few little buttons, pump status, for you to on the pump, standby. Standby, like why, when do we use a standby? So when we want to, tr to stop pumping, it may be because we want to adjust the balloon, maybe too low or too high. Yeah, we, at, at any point we find that the balloon position move, we can actually press standby because it shouldn't be pumping when we move the balloon. And you can on it back. Why is the good thing about, what is the good thing about standby? When we stand by, meaning that the helium is not uh, going to repurch again. So there are still, the, when we stand by, when we only back, the pump will pump automatically, uh, meaning that we'll start pumping without wasting time to re refill the helium. That's the features of the standby. And of course, if you need to stop the therapy, you can off it. And the off button is here. Okay, and we have a uh, alarm control keys. And if the alarm prompt us with some of the uh, warning and so on, you can press reset to stop the alarm and see the messages to troubleshoot what is happening. And this feature here is for us to set the timing of the alarm every 10 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so on. Balloon volume key. This is a balloon volume. I'm going to emphasize more on the balloon volume because just now I mentioned this feature, precise volume delivery, because volume is actually our dose given to the patients. When you know that sometimes when we actually decide on the balloon size, we usually look at the patient's height or the body surface area. Yeah, okay, for example, this from the patient's size, this patient may need 40 cc balloon. But when actually when I look at the system, it may not need 40 cc balloon. Because I will actually look at the augmentation value and also the balloon pressure waveform. I'm going to show uh, you all how does it work. 
Okay. Sorry. Uh, some inter interruption here because the simulator is affected. I'm going to restart the system. Okay, it's back to normal. So when we have the, the source, when we start to pump, okay, we have this cursor here. So this cursor is useful when we want to actually do the timing on our own. So you can actually use the cursor. As I actually move the cursor, you see this purple line? Can you all see? It will go down here. So this cursor is a very good guide when we want to do the manual deflation or inflation. And the other feature of it is to look at the pressure, the balloon pressure waveform. You, you see this plateau here? When you look at the side here, there's this little measurement. The measurement here is 135. And let's look at the augmentation. It's 122. Two. Can you all see? So why am I showing these two numbers? So the difference of these two shouldn't be more than 25 mm mercury. What does this tell you? Um, actually, the, this one here, this number here, is telling you the pressure in the, inside the balloon. Augmentation is a pressure outside. And you know that we want to achieve 85 to 90% occlusion, not more than that. So if it's too high, so now 135 minus 126 is only about 10, right? 10 mm mercury, so it's okay. So if let's say here the balloon pressure waveform is too high, meaning the pressure inside the balloon is too high, it's too much, we are occluding the aorta way too much. So now we can go to the balloon volume and decrease the balloon volume if it is needed. Because when we are using 40cc, doesn't mean that we don't have control. If at any point of time we need a lower volume, we can adjust and reduce it. So now, from actually comparing these two, we know that are we giving too much volume to the patients or too little? If too little, for example now, I'm using 30cc balloon based on the measurement. But the 30cc balloon is not able to deliver the optimal augmentation for the patients. Then, because it's way too low, the balloon pressure waveform we are showing is way too low. So we can actually change to a bigger size balloon for the patients to optimize the augmentation. Okay, I'm going to stop so that I can continue the remaining of my presentations. Yeah, so when we click here, balloon volume, you have these uh, features here. So decrease or increase. And when you press apply, meaning it will stay at that whatever volume that you have picked. And this feature here, uh, we use it mostly for the winning. It's not so much because the patient cannot tolerate the heart rate. But the other features is that uh, sometimes we also may move to one to two 
even though pa we, our system can tolerate high heart rate, because the patient condition may be with high heart rate, that, but the BP is so, so low, and sometimes it, they may do better with the 1 to 2 ratio. So we need to look at the, their augmentation and change it to see whether is the patient benefiting well with the 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 ratio. But for most of the patients that come in with a high heart rate, you do not need to worry that you need to change it to 1 to 2 ratio. So you can always give support 1 to 1 all the time. Oh, sorry. And the other thing that you can use this for weaning. I know that sometimes you may decrease the balloon volume, but because we can't decrease more than more than one third of the balloon volume. For example, if I'm using 30 cc balloon, the maximum I can decrease the volume is only up to I can it will cannot go lower than 20 cc. Yeah, same for 40 cc. It shouldn't go lower than 27 or 26. So we, because when it's too, the volume is too low, there will be a risk of the balloon, you know, crumble inside. When it's too much, you may trap the trump, you may clot, create clot. So we don't want that. That's why the rule is do not reduce the volume size lower than one third of the volume. So that's why this play a key role when we win the patients. So when we win it, we may change to one to two, to, and see whether the patients are tolerating well or not. If their augmentation good, some they actually off, remove the IMBP at 1 to 2. And some they may actually move to further, like 1 to 4 ratio. But at 1 to 4 ratio, because you know that it, it pumps so slow, it only pumps like every few bits, right? So what they do is that um, if your patient is in the ward for for one to four for a period of time, and the staff can actually help to do the manual inflation. So with the, the balloon, uh, the device actually come with the disposal come with the uh, 50, 60 cc syringe. Please keep it, don't throw it, because you may, it may be useful, because if you keep to one to four uh, assist ratio, you can manually inflate it, to reduce the risk of thrombosis. Yeah. Okay, and we have this every meal timing key. So what does it do? So this actually allow user to select or override autopilot deflation time, timing method. As I mentioned that we have this deflation timing method. So it will monitor whether is it safe to stick to the R wave or if the deflation trigger mode se selections the aroma timing key, if you are using the autopilot mode, what that, so when we are, there are noise or bovi detections, it can actually suspend the aroma detection on its own because the autopilot will sense that. So the benefit of it, more consistent and reliable aroma detection and less risk of big deflation when rhythm is normal. Okay. As I mentioned, you can on and or off the R wave deflation. So this allows user to select R wave deflation all the time. And regardless of freedom and remain in autopilot mode. So but need to observe the deflation may not be appropriate for all pa all patients' conditions. So yeah. This deflation timing management does not change trigger or deflation timing in this case. Okay, uh, this is on the control for operator mode. So as I mentioned, if autopilot, it will actually do its own inflation and deflation. So these two modes here, only applicable if we change to the operator mode. And we have the recorder to start and stop recording. Okay. And general functions like home, help, or even freeze the keys. Because sometimes you may be worrying that during the treatment, anybody may, you don't want people to come and disrupt the existing setting. You can actually freeze the keys. 
if someone come and touch it, it they wouldn't change the settings. Okay. So we have help functions. If you have any clue, you need any clue, you can go to the help functions to give you more guidance. Okay. Uh, the cursor have talked about it. And yeah, because when I have actually shared with you so many buttons, but when the patients come in, three critical things you need to remember. Um, yeah, so helium supply, you, when you're on the system, first thing actually, I wouldn't actually emphasize too, the three steps may not be this, but first on the system. When you're on the system, then you'll be able to see that whether we have the helium supply or not, whether sufficient or not. If blue means that it's safe, you can actually use this system and transport to another department. <coughs> and make sure that you have all this connection, ECG or AP, and your balloon. And then start the treatment. So you don't have to worry that oh, what button is this. So first patient come in when they need it, Remember three steps on the system, connections, and start pumping. But for the operator mode, um, when patients come in, you may need to do more steps. So you need to select operator mode, select your own trigger, then start pumping and monitor the timing. That's why the autopilot mode is so user friendly because you don't have to worry about the trigger and when do you need to time it? Oh, I'm going to share with you about the helium here. Blue means okay. If it's red color, means that you need to stand by a new tank, you need to change it. But if black, you need to change it now because it's critical. Because without helium, the pump will not pump. And um, the, our helium is so easy to change. You just need to unscrew it and take it out. And during, the, during this process of changing, the pump will still continue to pump. It won't interrupt the pump, the pumping. Okay, this is the front panel of the connectors. And these little things here that you are seldom use because you are not using the fiber optic. If you are using the fiber optic, you just need to slot in here and then a calibration key because because the, the disposable come with the fiber optic and calibration key and the same it need to be used with the same balloons because some hospital ever actually cut cut it for some reason so you, it need to match back with the same balloon that come with the packaging if you exchange it mix up it, it wouldn't actually work on another balloon These are the connections, AP, ECG. Okay. So ECG signal acquisition, direct and 5 lead ECG cable for AutoCAD 2. They are like 5 leads. I'm sure that you are using that. Okay. ECG select for on the autopilot, it actually selects automatically on whichever lead or source, the most stable one. So if at any time, if the source is not stable, it will actually switch to another source, but at the same time, it will maintain pumping. So that's a good thing about autopilot. Because for the operator mode, if the source is not good, if you don't change it on time, the pump may be interrupted, it may not pump. Okay, e ECG signal source switching. I'm going to do, go more details on a bit of technical. Because you can see that when do you, s when, why the system change to another source? So it switches to another available lead or source. Okay, and all the trigger loss. If let's say the source is not stable or lost for more than two seconds, it will switch to another available lead or source. And for the trigger, if the trigger lost, you have the alarm more than eight seconds. 
and best signal analysis is used for ECG lead or source. So current ECG source scoring is bad. So it will switch to another available lead source with better score. So if all the ECG scoring is so bad, it will move directly to the AP source and switches to another trigger mode. So when we click on to the ECGs, 5 lead ECG skin cable, yeah, you can actually click and change it if you like. So these are the, if all scores are equal, it will follow 2, 1, 3, 4, and then the monitor. Okay, sorry, the 5. Okay, and we, as I mentioned earlier that uh, we actually prefer the direct ECG, not through the slave, meaning from the, we prefer from the skin. Virtually no delay in signal acquisition. The calculation of pre-ejection period is accurate. And more choices for ECG. Seven leads can be chosen. Compared to AP, is only one. So these are the methods to um, get the high quality ECG signal. Prep the sites, site, shave the patients, clean the skin with alcohol, Gently roughen the skin. Yeah, and like, all these basic things I'm sure that you are doing. So, this is how it looks like when we slot in the fiber optic and the calibration key. Always make fiber optic AP sensor connections prior to removing IABP, IABC from package. So, before we remove the, the balloon, from the package, make sure that we insert these two in first. And it should be at the patient's chest level because it will do the zeroing. Once zero, because the system will prompt you that, because when you slot in, actually have two beep sound. After this two beep sound, just wait for less than 15 seconds, it will do the zeroing on its own. After the zeroing, then you can take out the balloon from the packaging and hey, sorry and slot it in here and you can use it as usual okay for AP select automatically selection of AP source using fiber optic as I mentioned as default when you plug in the fiber optic it will select the fiber optic source on its own. So when will this AP signal source switch? If not, I'm using the AP signal. So when the signal lasts for more than two seconds, it will switch to another available AP source and switches to ECG or pacer trigger. If AP source is not, all of the AP sources not available or it's not stable. And if you issues trigger loss alarm if more than eight seconds loss. So <coughs> AP selections, it actually follow the hierarchy, which is the fiber optic, transducer, and lastly the monitor. Yeah, we have like different AP scaling. I'm not going to talk much on, on all this scaling. Yeah, you can control it later when we do the hands-on, we can play on it. So, okay. Yeah, now I'm going to talk about the triggering. So this trigger, triggering, it's an indication of when, the, when each cardiac cycle begins. So it must be consistently recognized by the pump in order to begin on inflation or deflation. Connecting the patients to the console becomes extremely important for trigger recognitions. That's why we have seven trigger. So it, it's very sensitive and it can actually select the appropriate triggers for the patients even though the heart rate is high. Okay. 
And this chart here, I will leave these slides behind. If you all have time, you can look at it because like so many words here. But what I'm trying to share here is that each of the trigger works according to all these criteria. Pattern, we are looking at the heart rate, if less than 130, if peak, if more than 130 at any heart rate. And we have the atrial fibrillation that works on any heart rate and AP, replace and so on. So if any point that we are missing the ECG or AP, then it will move, if we are using the pacer, then it will move to the repace or a pace accordingly. Okay. So these are the compi combined features that we have. Autopilot, work with the fiber optics and the wave algorithm and best signal. Together, we give the proper timing trigger. So I'm going to skip all these unless you are interested to know more about it. Do you want me to go through it? I can skip, right? Okay. Okay. A feed. Okay, I can. I'm going to share on the uh, this trigger here. So if let's say a uh, patient's going to perform the operation, of course there's, there won't be any cardiac events. You can change to the internal trigger where it can preset rate of 100 bits per, mi per minute. So consistently it provides that. Of course, when we change the internal, and if the system can detect there's ECG or AP source, because it shouldn't have it, and the system will prompt me with the alarm to make sure that you do not select internal mode uh, accidentally. Okay, inflation. Um, on the timing, like I mentioned, we have six timing methods. Inflation, which is a wave predictive and wise law. Wave is actually using the real time. Predictive is using the historical data. Weisler is when we know that the, we actually look at the volume of the balloon and the heart rate. So when we need to deflate it earlier or later, that is the Weisler. For deflation, same thing. We have three deflation methods. Uh, this is the wave algorithm when we use with the fiber optic and how does it react? This is the chart. As you can see here, this is the arterial pressure. And how does this algorithm work is that it converts the arterial pressure to the aortic flow. Can you see this little dichrotic notch here? So, we see this correlation between the arterial pressure and the flow. When we convert it, we always see that the negative peak flow is often before the dichrotic notch. So, by knowing this, we actually set the inflation 15% before here to make sure that we have correct timing. That's how the wave algorithm works. And we have a white paper that share that compared, compared to conventional method, which is the predict, predictive method using the historical data. So on the arrhythmia patient, of 16 bits, the accuracy is only about 20% because it can only support 3 to 4 bits. And most of the time, um, the error timing is due to the early inflation. But when we use it on the fiber optic on the arrhythmia patients, 16 bits out of 16 bits, we get correct timing. That's the beauty of using the fiber optic on the challenging patients. So this is another slide to show that you can see here, correlate well to the peak flow, peak negative flow. Okay, so 
like I mentioned, all these combined make a difference to the IRBP therapy. Wave algorithm, when used with the fiber optic, it converts to the aortic flow. And from knowing all this information, the autopilot will get the trigger and time it properly and pump to give the optimal therapeutic efficacy to the patients. Um, this is on the predictive. Because when we actually do the operator timing, you can actually look at this. You know that the cursor here, I need to reset the simulator, so I'm going to touch on the play on the system later. Yeah, you can actually look, put the cursor here, and how this predictive inflation works. We actually have this rule that here maintain about two thirds and one third to give the good augmentation. Okay. And we use the historical information and balloon speed to achieve 90% of IABP deflation by the next AP upstroke. So adjustment for balloon speed if it's needed because the system can do on its own if we are using autopilot. Okay, I have touched on this, I'm going to skip. And the system will do the timing checks on its own. Because if we because sometimes the it can cause unassisted bits or early deflation. So what this wave inflation do is that every three bits whenever wave inflation initiated and every 10 minutes it will do a check. See whether are we giving like all the bits assist or is there any early deflation or not? So we'll do the check. So when in wave inflation and systolic upstroke is lost, skips two bits and pumps three bits and skips two bits before Weisler is selected. Weisler is looking at the balloon volume, remember? Okay. So PEP pre-ejected period check if needed, short deflation every two minutes and one drop beat every six minutes. That's how it works. Okay, this is a graph on looking at the pre-ejection period. And this is how we control the speed to make sure that we get the correct deflation. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to the helium delivery and some alarm system. So this is the balloon pressure waveform. And every number here means something. So from the sorry. From the pump two, three, and four, meaning that the helium gas is getting out from the pump and into the catheter here, 5 and from 6, 7, 8, this is back to the pump. Sorry. So we have four different classes of alarm. Class 1, 2, 3, 4. So class 1, how class one actually is usually is because of perch failure. I'm sure that you are sometimes you see all these messages. Perch failure, helium loss two or three, high pressure, high baseline, or large helium leak. Then the pump will stop pumping because it's critical and you need to do something. Perch failure. Pump did not fill adequately with helium to establish the balloon pressure waveform baseline. So, meaning that the helium tank is empty or connection, the catheter connection in, is not contact, connecting properly. You may want to check it. Sometimes, like you adjust it, may not work, you can actually pull it out and plug it back in. 
Okay, helium lost two and three. So you can see this baseline here, it actually dropped. So you can look at the balloon pressure waveform and tell, can I able to see that what is the possible reason for it to happen? Then you can troubleshoot accordingly. So check for the leak in queuing and connections. So meaning that make sure that all the connections are intact. Blood in catheter tubing. Make sure that there's no blood in catheter tubing or king catheter. Maybe patients leave up their legs and something obstruct. So check all these points. Okay. And helium lost two. Three refill attempts in two minutes. If it's filled, then you will see the alarm. Helium lost three. This one here, you see this sign? Less than minus 10 mm mercury for three consecutive beats. That's a signal of it. Look out for all these things. Okay. And possible of the blood in tubing is because the possibility of the balloon rupture. So here we cannot continue the pump. In this case, if it's not ready to wean the patients, so we may change to another balloon catheter. Leak in tubing or connections, you see the helium is missing. And this sign here, meaning that there's king in catheter or partially red balloon. Balloon too large. If king meaning that the helium could, couldn't deliver fully. Partially wrapped, same thing. Because it's wrapped, so we can't de deliver the helium fully. And balloon is too large. You can, if the aorta size cannot accommodate the large balloon, meaning that we are not giving the full volume to the patients. That's why we have this way, balloon pressure waveform on the monitor. Okay, king. Okay, uh, yeah. So we can actually use a wire reinforced sheet or catheter for insertion to minimize the king problem. After insertion, keep leg straight or decrease IAB volume. So we may want to do floral and check. Because I'm not sure your practice, do you use floral frequently to check on the position? No. What, what will be the op other option? X-ray. Ah, okay, X-ray. So usually X-ray. Yeah. Um, and the other things um, I actually learned from other physicians, sometimes they use the left arterial line to actually see whether the, the position is accurate or not. Have you ever heard of that? Because you see that if the you need to have the left arterial line. If the augmentation look obstructed, it may be too deep in near to the subclavian. And when we pull out, if you see the obstruction, you may actually pull the balloon back a bit, then you see the full augmentation, and then move it down about two centimeters. Then you get the right position. Have you had something to share? Because that's what I've learned from the market. King. Okay, class 2. Example of the class 2 alarm. Standby greater than 3 minutes. If you press a standby long, then it will actually give you the alarm to make sure that patients are, are receiving the therapy. Because sometimes maybe because you stand by and forgot to on it. So the alarm is telling you that okay. Are you sure you want to keep standing, standby or continue the treatment? ECG trigger loss, pressure trigger loss, ECG leak fault detected. So you will get this class 2 signal. Go to standby. Deflate the... Uh, yeah, this is a response. I mean, yeah, you can actually look at this and these are the steps that you can actually work on it. Class 3. AP fiber optic signal. This is related to the fiber optic. So if you are not using the fiber optic, you can actually ignore this for now until in future when you start using the fiber optic. Okay. 
And the other class 3 examples, drain failure. Drain is a little, uh, little bottle, yes. Then deflation marker beyond 100%. Warning because of the, op the battery running out. So battery timing remaining 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Then you get the alarm as well. And rarely ECG detected or low helium tank pressure. The pump response is actually communicating, communicating with you and displaying a message. So the pump will still continue to pump for class 3. And class 4, it won't have the alarm, but it will display the messages. Like if there's no ECG signal available, no AP signal available, ECG lead fault, erratic triggering, dead clock battery or low battery for static RAM. So it will actually show you the message. Okay, thank you for your attention. I know that you are struggling to listen because <laughs> a lot of information. Uh, any questions so far? Have I covered all of the problem that you are facing daily? I know that the support staff usually to your the troubleshooting may be quite important. Is there anything missing that you think that um, you haven't figured out yet. Now, I, I give you time to think. Later on, when we do hands-on, you can actually ask me. Because when we actually touch on the system, you may actually know uh, more about it. And now... Um, I have a question. Okay. Um, we used to have, uh, like, uh, in, in uh, winning mode, we used to have 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3. So you have shown 1 is to 8. Uh, what is that? Uh, one is to eight. One is to eight is also another uh, winning ratio, but because a lot, of, a lot of time physicians may not want to choose that. As I mentioned, even though one to four, they may be also worrying of the risk of clotting, right? That's why they may using the manual. So if one to eight, meaning that even though for patients one to four, it may be not also doing very well, right? So that's why you actually keep to 1 to 8. But in a lot of times, they don't use 1 to 8. Either they use up to 1 to 2 or 1 to 4. 1 to 2, you don't have to worry so much with the manual inflation, de deflation. But the 1 to 4, you may actually want to, if the patient's on 1 to 4 for a long time, you may want to do the manual. And the manual also useful because sometimes you know the system. For some reason, because the helium tank is low, and the supply is not there and the staff is running to somewhere to get the helium gas. So you, if it's actually stopped pumping for more than 15 or 20 minutes based on the IFU guide, you should actually use the, the syringe yeah, to do the manual to reduce the risk of clotting. That, won't, that would not be a good idea because it will be um, interrupting and the timing, right? Yeah, timing. No, no, but because at the moment, it, the system totally stopped because there's no helium supply. So how many, uh, how long we can keep the uh, catheter in if we don't have helium? I mean, mm. uh, heparin works there not to uh, clot the, uh, our aorta, but still uh, how uh, long we can keep the catheter in if we don't have helium and the system is not working? Mm. Because I have you mentioned from 15 to 30 minutes, you need to do the inflation. As long as you are doing these activities, right. yeah, you can actually and if we have, keep it. If we can't do it, then we need to take yes. the balloon out? Uh, for some reason, if you can't do it, of course you need to take out. Because the thing is that it's in, remain in the body also won't give the patients benefit. Yeah. No, but the another thing is it will be uh, encourage clotting. You know, yes, correct. Yeah, and if the if the balloon is there and there's no uh, counter pulsation, yes, correct. Then it will be uh, promote uh, clotting and it will be harm to patients. Yes, correct. Mm. So stand by your helium or yeah, yeah. some support stuff. Excuse me. Uh, I've noticed with your balloon sometimes that you put it in and the augment, augmented pressure doesn't go above the systolic pressure. Mm. So I mean, if the systolic is sixty. Okay. You get an augmented pressure of 60 or 55 as well. Okay. What would be the reason for that? Uh, the volume. Have you uh, check the volume, and also check the position of the balloon. It may be too low, or volume is not sufficient. 
So uh, that is the case of you are using which balloon? 30, 40? We're using 40. Okay. So maybe you need to check the position of the balloon. If 40, or maybe even actually for 40, right? It may not be sufficient for the patients. After you check all this, or maybe the condition of the patient. Hypovolumia uh, hypo patients. So or the aorta is too compliant. Even though that you are giving the correct uh, volume, the balloon volume, you can't do much because the aorta is very compliant. When you, you put in one volume also, it won't expand much. So that are the few possible reasons. Yeah, so first, check whatever we can do. Secondly, is it the mach what machine can do, what we can do, or something that we cannot control? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. But we can, uh, sir, we can do is we can uh, switch from auto to manual and we can uh, uh, adjust the inflation and deflation timing. So that would also help. But mm. uh, sometimes uh, this auto pilot system doesn't work uh, very efficiently with this uh, transducer method. Mm. So, so we can switch that to manual. No, um, and if we are we having a transducer method, we can use switch to a manual and then we set the uh, inflation and deflation, inflation uh, timing and deflation time, so it would help. But uh, if it is an auto mode, we can't do that. Yeah, because the other thing is that uh, we need to look at the augmentation graph to see that whether, uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> maybe can distribute some of this here. No, sir. The, the issues are raised is mm. very important because if augmentation pressure is not uh, over the uh, over the systolic pressure, it means uh, the aortic uh, anti aortic group is useless here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, later, um, I will try a flash because I it's not in the slides. So you mentioned the augmentation, right? Uh, the correct one will be something like this, yeah. but because it's not properly timed. There are a few things that I mentioned to you. And I think the other thing also, we need to look at the slope. So if this is happening, meaning that you can actually go to the operator mode and do the timing. So maybe if you are seeing that, but it's not a timing problem, even though when we move to manual, it may not help. So all this, we need to consider. This is for you. Okay. I would like to actually show you all this uh, comparison of the wave compared to the conventional. Because just now before we have the break, we were talking about the augmentations and so on. Sometimes you, measure, you mentioned that we, with the transducer, it can't work. Because you know that patients, because they are having the uh, irregular heartbeat and so on. So like every male patients. Sometimes it's very hard to even detect with the transducer AP source. So that's why when you look at this chart here, can you all see? This is the improper timing using the conventional, which is the predictive method. So this is using the wave algorithm with the fiber optic. So uh, this actually showing that it's a bit small. Um, of 16 bit, only 4 bit is timed properly. And this is using the wave algorithm with the fiber optic. 16 out of 16 bit, you get it timed properly. Yeah, that's the difference. If you have the fiber optic available in your center, you have the option. Let's say if those patients is so challenging that you can't actually have the proper augmentation you can actually choose to use the fiber update. 